Hello everyone, Commander Kingfish here, and I am going to start Homeworld Deserts of Karak, the campaign. Now I've been in and out of it a little bit, so just to kind of get a feel for the game, but I'm still uh, really learning, uh, kind of learning as a really a new player. So I'm going to uh, actually start from the beginning. We're just going to kind of walk through the tutorial and uh, kind of get a feel for how the game is. That might help you guys out there as well. And uh, we can talk a little bit about uh, Homeworld and uh, the desert. So let's go ahead and get this started. And we're going to start with the campaign tutorial. And there we go. Let's start. So there'll be a little bit of cutscenes and whatnot, but the deserts of Karak take place before the homeworld uh, universe, after they have already hyperspaced out into the uh, galaxy, uh, once they got hyperdrive. So this is really kind of the prelude or, or how they identified that uh, technology and what they went through to, to secure it. In this tutorial, you'll learn the basics of how to play. The game itself is really good. I mean, the, the graphics on it, I'm, I'm really impressed with it. Uh, and uh, a lot of pretty good mechanics in the game itself. A lot of RTS mechanics. So, we'll uh, go through all the... on the left. These are your gameplay goals. Right up there, gameplay goals. All right. Select a unit by left clicking or dragging a selection box around the unit. Strike craft ready. Left click and hold to drag a selection box around several units. That's normal RTS play right there. Move selected units by clicking the right mouse button on a position. And right up to that point. Nothing, nothing really different about that. So uh, there's our carrier in the background. And Hold shift. All right. Issuing commands to cue them. We can do that. So uh, shift, uh, and then just kind of move. dot across the map. Cleared for move. So they'll follow that uh, course that you set out for them uh, using shift. Something I just uh, kind of actually learned. Next, you'll learn how to control the game camera. And that's kind of typically. Scroll the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. There we go. You can get some... Hold the right mouse button and move the mouse to rotate and pitch the camera. Really get some nice views. now. Some nice camera angles on this. Press backspace to reset the camera to its default orientation. And uh, kind of get a nice view. Panning the camera is just as easy. And uh, arrows, panning. Press the arrow keys on your keyboard or hold down the middle mouse button and move the mouse. And I tend... Information about selected units is displayed in the bottom left. I, I tend to Command use my like mouse across the screen. That's how I usually scroll around. Right. This is a command carrier. It produces units for combat and resourcing. The command carrier is your mobile headquarters. Durable, but lightly armed. Okay. You can press the home or tilde key to select your carrier at any time. Or you can click on it. Move the carrier to the marked position. All right, again, just position right click. Mark. There Take we go. Out. Press the F key to focus the game camera on selected units. So now you can the zoom in and focused units while still allowing you to zoom and follow rotate. along with it. Pan the camera in any direction to break focus. And there you go. Press the space bar to open the sensors manager. Okay. So this is like in Homeworld. Select and move units within the sensors manager. So you can Red actually select them represent and enemy units. move them. White icons represent your units. Your selected units are green. There we go. Orange and blue triangles represent resources. Blue domes represent the sensor range or vision of your units. Right around here. Enemy units within contact range are marked with a red circle. There we go. As your units get closer, they'll be in sensor range of the enemy. At this point, you will see each enemy unit clearly. There we go. 
All right, then space bar to come back. When issuing an attack move command, you'll see a red line drawn between the selected unit and the mouse cursor. This is pretty cool. When this line appears broken, the selected unit cannot fire on its target. This indicates that high terrain or an obstacle is blocking the unit's line of fire. You will therefore have to move units around the obstacle or onto high ground in order to achieve a clear line of fire. I like that. Select your light attack change, vehicles change in elevation to destroy the enemy units. You can right click an enemy unit to attack or press A and left click to attack. All right, group. I think we're going to have some enemies to coming in your here. Units to attack a group of enemies. There we go. Hold the control key and drag a box around the target enemy units. There we go. Clear to engage. And we can uh tracking hostile. Strike craft taking a fire. Confirmed alerts 2 and 3 just went red. Contact on the board. Hostile strike craft down. Yeah. Alert. LAB down. There we go. On our way. All right. Let's move these guys back over here. Select the command carrier now. All right. The command carrier has a unique power shunting system used to manage combat and production capability. Ready. Prep for this. Add all available power to the turret. This is kind of cool, system. and I'm going to have to be look learning this. Enemy contact. So it's board. put all the power into its uh, Enemy weapons. Enemy are attacking the carrier. Destroy them. And so we'll just do a control box around Target them, set. and let's get a view of these guys from their perspective of what's going to happen here. Alert! Carrier is taking fire. There we go. With the right power distribution, the command carrier can hold its own in combat. Yep. Okay. Selecting a unit and pressing the move or attack move command button displays the terrain overlay. While the terrain overlay is active, some terrain is color shaded to display its relative height. The three colors of the terrain overlay represent high ground, low ground, and neutral ground. When a unit takes position on the high ground, it deals extra damage when yeah. attacking units on the I like that. Terrain. It, it takes the terrain into the account. Enemy have deployed armored units. You'll have to find another way to defeat this enemy force. Okay. Railguns are most effective when firing from long range. However, they can be easily overwhelmed by short range strike craft like light attack vehicles. Okay, so identified craft on approach. Mark the bearing. Let's strike copies. Do this. Uh, use the labs to destroy the railguns. Assign a control group by holding the control key and pressing a number key. All right, Sound we'll, detected. we'll do that. Select units in a control group by pressing the corresponding number key. And we're going to select all these guys. Ready. And control one. Control group. Use the boost ability on your light attack vehicles to intercept the enemy. And we're going to select tell the them light attack vehicles and to left click the boost ability button. Take then issue these guys move. out. That's one of our objectives. We'll use the labs to destroy the rail guns. As vehicle crews score kills in combat, Oop, they'll earn veterancy. Good. Veterancy improves combat ability. To see veterancy, and select here the they come, Most roaring in over the hill. In the lower right corner of the command area. Veteran units also have a veterancy badge, and visible on their health bar that's, in the main game viewpoint. That takes care Repair of those and guys. Veteran units. When your forces are outnumbered, veteran troops can turn the tide of the battle. And let's uh, Ready, set. zero in over here. Our next objective is we've got to use the rail guns, or we'll actually let's go ahead and use the armored assault vehicles. We'll make Operate. them control, control two, two designated. and we'll select Three. them, and we'll tell them to take out these guys up here. Maneuver and engage. There we go. Nice view with the camera. Whoa! -ho -ho -ho! All right, move up, boys. Come on. Hostile on sensors. Authentication pending. Armor vehicle taking effective fire. There we go. Take them out. Take them out. 
Wow, did you see that one uh, flip up into the air? Take these guys out. Take them out. This is our armored assault. They're handling them pretty well. There we go. All right, that's that objective. We got one left, and that's these guys. Railgun copies. And we're going to make them control, control three. three designated. And we're going to select them. Online. And we're going to have move them up right along the ridge right here. Board is green. And they should just come up to the high ground. And we can take out the enemy armored assault vehicles over here. Which again is pretty cool. Enemy armor on approach. All right. Control. Take them out. Take them out. Take them out, boys. Enemy armor disabled. Got one moving away. Take them out. Take them out. So they're out of range. So that's good to know that the rail guns are a long range weapon. But. As we saw earlier, they can be uh, susceptible to fast-moving vehicles. The All right, let's move these. Deployed a mixed attack force. Move these no guys back. Type will excel at destroying this target. Moving. However, aircraft can attack this force with impunity. Uh, select the command carrier to launch aircraft. Okay, we can do that. Launch so, aircraft by selecting the carrier and clicking the launch ability button. So, After for whatever reason, my mouse didn't always... Location to launch your aircraft. Unless it's... Now, I just hit While W. Deployed, aircraft can be selected and issued commands. And then like uh, we're going to hit... Uh, Once their ammunition is do deployed, that right the there. Will automatically return with the command carrier to reload that should be launching them. Hostiles there they go. Go ahead. There we go. Look at that. Nice. Although we didn't quite destroy them, we're going to have to... Let's do another launch. Reading. And we'll do another W. Let's take these guys out this time. Strike fighter approach vector dialed in. There we go. Strike. Excellent. You have completed the tutorial. So, yeah. I got this down pretty good. Explore the vast deserts of Going out in real battle will be a different story, though, for the old commander. Let me tell you. All right, so we're going to move on to the uh, the next. Uh, that's Epsilon Base, which is really kind of a continuation of the tutorial, and uh, that will help us learn a few other things. So let's go ahead and go to Epsilon Base and start up there. There we go. So now what we're doing here is just kind of doing a little more learning on how the uh, manufacturing, how you create new uh, vehicles, and how you uh, collect resources. So uh, it should, uh, uh, it's pretty interesting. It really kind of helps get you set up. And then the following mission after that is really the first real mission. There's some pretty good cutscenes in through here, so it really kind of starts telling the story of Karak. Or Karak. Our planet is dying. The desert grows with every passing year. The world is at war. But there is hope. An object has been detected deep within the Great Banded Desert. It has been called the Jiraki Object, the primary anomaly. We believe it may hold the key to our salvation. An expedition to retrieve it is being prepared. I really like the way they've done the graphics on here. Really got that feel of being in the desert. 
Girl, you uh, have a lot of trust in those boys up there, don't you? All right. The detail and everything in the models is tremendous. So as the story unfolds, what we're, we're going to be going on an expedition in behind one of the other tribes' territory to try to retrieve an anomaly. And uh, it's really kind of the basis as we move forward on what this storyline is all about. Obviously there's going to be battles and we're going to be dealing with the, uh, the other kith, I believe is how they say it. And, uh, in essence, it's a different tribe that, uh, believes that... Rachel, we need that control module hooked up before we launch, and we don't have a lot of time. Disturbing the, said, the anomaly, You're clear. uh, fine. is going to have grave consequences. And if you've watched Homeworld, you'll understand. Rachel. Or if you've played Homeworld. Galcian attacks have been launched against multiple coalition bases. The northern frontier is under attack. The launch of our expedition carrier, the Capisi, has been accelerated. All right, here we go. This is the captain of the Sujet Carrier Capisi. All crews, Hangar 5. Stand by to initiate rollout sequence. Loading control module now. Stand by. Okay. Gauge main drive. Laneway clear. All stations green. Captain has the helm. Here Apple we go. Blue on all decks. Full complement aboard. Here's our carrier. Look at that gun. Look at that big gun. She's big. Cooling tanks online at 4.3. Power plant reading 5.9. Cycling at 30 second increments until 99 at 7. Bringing systems online. Fleet manager online. Resource control system online. All right, here's our uh, unit status online. Command system online. Our systems are all coming online. Our HUD is uh, Objective coming tracking up. online. There we go. All okay. control systems successfully installed and online. Our objective is to System prepare confirmed. for the expedition. Rachel, redeploy to your base runner. Copy that. Attention all stations. Okay. This is fleet intelligence for the expedition carrier Capisi. I will be issuing all mission objectives through this channel. Before departure, we need to run essential tests on our key capabilities. Vehicle production, resource salvaging, and combat operations. Time is of the essence, so let's run through these quickly. Okay. Fleet operations, is your channel clear? Affirmative. I will be providing all non-critical updates on unit production, research, resource salvaging, and all carrier systems through this channel. Perfect. Thank Copy you. that. Stand by to initiate production test. Okay. Deploy a salvager. We can do that. So. First, deploy a salvager from the command carrier Capri. All right, so we select the PC, and it's over here, basic vehicle construction, and we want one. One. There we go. There we go, and there, there's our salvager. to commence resource test. Okay. Order now. the salvager to gather nearby resources located here. Okay, we can do that, and that's... I select, and I had selected the salvager, and then I left-clicked onto the... Let's uh, zoom in on it and see it collecting... There it is, it's collecting the resources. Now, it always kind of pulls away. Rachel. The Capisi support cruiser has suffered a mechanical failure and requires immediate repairs and before departure. There it is. 
All right. So let's break focus on that. The support cruiser located here. All right. So we select Arena Rachel's orders. unit, and we've got to uh, repair the support cruiser. So let's go ahead and click the wrench, and we will left right. App. Select that, select that, and then left click. There she goes. There's Rachel. And there's the, there's the beam going out, and you can see that it's repairing. If I click, actually, I got, you can see it right up here too that the support cruiser is being uh, repaired. All right, so that's Repair done. Completed. Good work, Rachel. Stand by for combat test. Okay. In order to produce combat vehicles, we will need to invest time and resources in upgrading our tech. All right. The first step is to upgrade the Capici's advanced manufacturing facilities. Once that is done, we will be able to build light attack vehicles. Capici, go ahead. All right. Now here's where I've been kind of struggling a little bit. Uh, I haven't been able to figure out. I, I, I'm assuming this pops up whenever we have opportunities for engineering. So what they want us to do is uh, actually create the lab or the light attack vehicle fabrication. There it goes. Now we'll be able to build uh, those uh, uh, light attack vehicles. Research completed. There light we attack go. vehicle fabrication now online. Okay. Produce three light attack vehicles from the Capici. All right, just like we did with the Salvager. We have the light attack uh, vehicle there, so we want three of them. One, two, three. So those should all be in the queue, and here they come. There's the first one. The second one. Light attack vehicle in service. And there we go. Light attack vehicles ready. Target drones are now ready for weapons testing. There they go. Use the light attack vehicles to target and destroy the drones located here. All right, we can do that. Let's uh, go ahead and select these, and they Copy. should Clear attack. Let's go ahead and zoom in on these guys. And it's going to be different out in the desert, boys. They're not just going to be crates sitting up that you're going to sit there and blast. Yeah, there we go. There's two, and there goes the third one. All right. All required tests are complete. Give me a go, no go for launch. Operations? Go. Bridge? Go. Rachel? Science team's in place, we're go. Engineering? Go. Confirm all systems go. All right, everything's a go, and we can Virginia launch. We are go for launch. We can launch the Capici, and let's do that. There we go. And that's Epsilon Base. Outer doors opening. Mass ratio in line. Tracking solid. Doors at 50%. Looking good. And that's really the tutorial for this. The speed and move out. These first two, the campaign, or the very first one was really just the basic tutorial. And this is kind of the kickoff of the expedition and tutorial. And so now Outer doors at full aperture and we are going to be rolling out into the desert. All stations, this is your captain. Today we embark on a historic mission to find and retrieve the Draki object. Lying at the heart of the Great Banded Desert, deep inside Galcian territory, we believe it holds the key to our survival on this planet journey will be perilous, but if successful, we will change the course of history forever. Look at that. Secure our future for generations to come.
Personal log, science officer Rachel Sajet, expedition carrier Capisi. We've launched three months ahead of schedule and just in time. The Gaussian threat was far greater than we had anticipated. As the lead scientist on this expedition, I'm more convinced than ever that my brother was right, that what lies out there amongst the dunes holds the key to our survival on this planet and possibly beyond. We have no choice now but to believe. All right, guys. Well, that's the first. Uh, we've been about 25 minutes. I'm going to try to hold these to 30 to 40 minutes. So we're just about right to stop it here. And uh, we'll pick it up uh, right here on the uh, next uh, episode. But that's uh, Deserts of, that's Homeworld Deserts of Karak. And that's really kind of getting us rolling out into the desert. So the next one is we head out to the Boneyard. So give it a big thumbs up if you like this content. Leave uh, suggestions. Tell me what you think about uh, Deserts of Karak. And uh, with that, Commander Kingfish is out of here. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.